So our objective was to find the common denominator um, by ordering fractions. So children will be using manipulatives and I'll be listening out for those children discussing the lowest common multiple uh, and this will be shown through the number odds becoming equal to one another as they move on. So for prior learning we uh, looked at uh, a cold task using the uh, assessment booklets that they, that they use um, and I would identify where to start for this journey. Um, and in this case, I needed to return to the Year 5 handbook um, due to the COVID school closures uh, and work from there. So in the lesson, the children were able to successfully identify and order fractions. Uh, those that do need further support will have a same-day intervention with me uh, and work on identifying uh, the common denominator for just two fractions. Um, those confident will go on to work from the pupil book uh, to deepen their understanding. Our learning objective today is to find the common denominator of fractions with different denominators. So we're going to start by looking at our numicon on the board. So what fractions have we got? Somebody tell me, Livia. One third. Be careful. What is one this? Fourth. One fourth. What would we say? What would we call that? A quarter. A quarter. And then we've also got Livia. Two thirds. Two fifths. And what I want you to do is, with the new column, the crease and errors, I would like you to find equivalent fractions. So I've just been through it with Hayden and Peter over there. As far as using the number odds, I would have my one and my four. I can rotate that round. Here we go. What would I add next? What could I do next to see if I can get that, uh, if I'm finding an equivalent? Jensen? Um, you could add another um, four on and another one on. Okay, so if I do that, i take that around. And I can just put it above, that's fine. So now what would be my, what would be my fraction now if this was all part of my fraction now be Bradley? Two eighths. Two eighths. Does that make sense? So you're looking for an equivalent fraction showing it with Numicon. So don't write it in your book just yet. I want everybody for those two fractions, so one quarter and two fifths, to show me a set of equivalent fractions using the number odds. Off you go. So now what's the fraction? Yes. Three. Three and five. So keep going and do it for the other ones as well. So then you've got fits in it. Okay? Just keep going with both. And then you might spot something. So I'm listening out for something really important that you might notice. So work with both fractions, showing me equivalents. And then I'm listening for something that might be really useful. Good. And then you're doing one quarter at a time. So, one quarter. And again, one quarter. Okay. What's the fraction now? Three quarters. If I was to do it again. Okay, so what, what knowledge are you using there? Is it knowledge of 
Jason? Times tables. Times tables. What specifically could that be? Factors, multiples, what sorts of knowledge are you having to use to help you with that? Come on, Jason. Common multiples? You're finding common multiples. So, that's what I was looking for. So if in your, on your uh, table you have found where it matches up, and the boys here have got it, the denominators are now the same. Okay? So what is your denominator for both of your fractions? 20. 20. So it's 20 is the common multiple of both 4 uh, of both four and 5. It's the first common multiple. Yeah? We agree on that? First yeah. common multiple. What about the numerator? So what's the numerator now for, if you have shown those now, what would those fractions be written that you have where they both have the same denominator? So can you write those down in your book? Write those down in your book. So once they are uh, the same denominators, what would the um, numerator be? So you might want to just write those in. And write in your book what the new fractions are for you. Jensen kindly started us off with finding the common denominator. So we've all agreed now that the common denominator for both of those fractions should be 20. Now we need to look at how we got there. Okay. So looking at the fractions, what did we have to do to the quarter, the 1 over 4, to get it to be 20th? What did we have to do to the fifth to get it to 20th? How could you use the Cuisinier rods to help you with that? How could you use the Cuisinier rods to help you with that? How might you do that? How might you do that? If I was to look at them, how did I get to 20? How did I get 4 to 20? How did I get 4 to 20? Just have a quick chat with the person next to you. How did you get 4 to 20? What did you do to see that the denominator should be 20? So if we do fifths, what would you do? So we're going to do that on the board in a second. Okay, right, who has uh, their thoughts about that then? So how do we get our one quarter? We've all agreed that the first it should be something over 20, and our two fifths should be something over 20. So what did we do to get them to that point? So how do we just come up with 20? We know that the common multiple of both, therefore that's what we know then becomes the common denominator, but how do we get there? Jensen? Um, when you multiply 4 by 5, you get to 20, which is the lowest common multiple, so that can be both of their denominators. And because you multiply 4 times 5, you need to multiply the numerator, which is 1 by 5, which would turn into 5 20. So 5 over 20. Okay, and we can check that because we've got our fours here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So it's five times four. And we've got our one five times. So one, two, three, four, five. So we can check it using our Greek and rods as well. Okay? So if we apply that same sort of strategy that Jensen's used for the quarters and apply that to the fifths, somebody else give me that knowledge. So we use the same thing that Jensen's just done with the quarters to use for fifths. I want somebody on this side of the room to come up with that. So if I'm doing fifths, what do I need to do to my fifths to get to 20? It's Grace. Times it by four. Times it by four. And Grace, what did Jensen say that because we times, uh, we did the denominator by four? By four as well. So what does that become, Grace? So which fraction is larger? Two fifths. Two fifths. Yep. So we can write them down like this. Okay. So very simply, we've ordered two fractions there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. We've ordered two fractions. So what we're going to have a go at now together is this one. Okay. You can work as a pair. 
and I'm going to come around and check how you get on. So in the same way that we've done it here, I want to see it in the same sort of layout. Who's in air rods? And then next to the calculations, you're going to show me what you did to get to the denominator, and then show me what you did for the numerator as well. Okay, off you go. Have a go with your partner for these two questions here. looking for any common multiple, what one is going to make it easier for us first? Jack? The lowest common multiple. The lowest common multiple. Have you identified the lowest common multiple for the set of fractions that are on the board here? Have you found the lowest common multiple? Hands up if you think you have. Okay, uh, that's every pair's got their hand up. So, what is the lowest common multiple, Hayden? 15. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that for our fractions that we've got here, two thirds will have a denominator of 15 and uh, three fifths will also have the denominator of 15. Using what we have discussed before with Jensen and um, Grace, where we were using our cruise and rods, what is the calculation that we're going to do to get our two thirds to have a denominator of 15. What is the calculation we do? What did we have to do? Nivea? How much it took you? So it would be 3 times 5, which is 15. 3 times 5, which is 15. And then the numerator, yeah. 5 is 10. 10. 10, so 10 15. 10 15. So what did we do for this one? What did we do for this one, Jack? Get from 5 as our denominator to 15, what do we have to do? We turn the 5 by 3. The 5 by 3, and because we've done that to our denominator, we must do, it to the numerator. do that to the numerator. So, what does that become, Jack? 15. Something over 15. Mm -hmm. 3 times 3, yeah. 9. 9 over 15. And actually, they're very close, aren't they? Yeah. Very close. Mm -hmm. So which is the larger fraction? What symbol would I put in, in between these two? What symbol would I put? Which way around do it? Um, where does that become? You can come up and do it. We're tall enough, I think. Just about. What would you put in there? So which one is the larger fraction? Have a go. And we can discuss if we agree. So 2 thirds is 10 over 15, and 3 fifths is 9 over 15. Which 
Do we agree with Grace? Yes. Yes, we agree with Grace. Good. Okay. So I'm going to now put a selection of more fractions on the board. You're going to follow the same strategy, but there's more than two fractions. There might be three, four, or even five of them, and you are trying to find a common denominator of all five of those fractions to then order them in the same way that you've sort of kind of done here. Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent. So that's what we're going to do. Can you now tell me what these fractions are? So we've laid them out in Cousin and Rods. Can you tell me what the fractions are on the board? What is it representing? Holly? Three fifths. So the first one, three fifths. Somebody give me another one and tell me which one they're doing. Peter? The second one is seven tenths. The second one is seven tenths. What's the third one, Jensen? Five eighths. Five eighths. And the fourth one, Hayden? The fourth one... 16 over 20. 16 over 20. And the last one, Livia? Three fourths. Three fourths. How else might we say that? Three quarters. Three quarters, thank you. Okay, so your task now with your partner is to find a common denominator for all of those fractions. Once you've found a common denominator for all of those fractions, you are then going to order them from largest to smallest. So you're ordering them from largest to smallest. Now some of you might have already thought, actually, I already know what the common denominator is. Yeah. I would yeah. still like you, however, to prove that theory, prove what you are saying using the Cuisinerals. So I want it represented using the number odds as well. Everybody understand their task? So you're working with your partner to find a common denominator for all of those fractions there. Off you go. Off you go. So you should see the, the, the quiz and errors being used. Go. Okay. Um, okay. Right, so let's take the first one for example. Yeah. And three fifths. Three fifths. Okay. Now what would be a good strategy, do you think, for um, do we do loads of three fifths? Or do we do, how would you go about it? Do we just do loads of three fifths? Or do we maybe do one three fifth, one seven ten? How do you think Why might that be easier to, to, to do one of each? Because if you keep doing one, then if you do the next one, and it's not the same, you have to do like even more. Yeah, you might do too many of one, because actually the common denominator might actually be quite small. But you might have extended it too far and you've wasted a lot of time. So if you do one at a time, you might find that one a bit more. Alright, so give that a go. Okay, so you should be doing the same. So start with three fifths. What's the next fraction that you need to work with? Seven tenths, so get one lot of seven tenths out. That's it, nice, good. One of each, and then it's easier to line up each one, isn't it? Okay? So you go to your next set of when you do the um, 20th. The next one that you do, just join in the end. Okay, what needs to go there then? So what is this fraction currently? What's your numerator? Forty. What's your numerator? That's two. So it's two over forty. So you could use your white pen keep track of it. So you could write on the table thirty-two over fifty this one so far. Okay. So pop it on the end. If you need to add it to it later, you can. So that's two. Over 50. Yep. Now, continue that with this. I wonder if, I wonder if, 40 might be a common denominator of all of those. Okay, 
Okay, if everybody just pause this for a second. Um, if you, you're all close enough so that you can see. So if you can just look towards Peter and Hayden, what they're doing is they've laid out one of each fraction first. So they've laid out one of each fraction first, and then from that point, they're going to add one set at a time. And the reason they've done that is so that they can find when each one becomes an equivalent. Yeah? Probably. So you can find when each one becomes an equivalent. So they're not doing loads and loads of one. They can do one of each and continue to build it up over time. So they're going to do another one of the three fifths. Then they're going to go to seven tenths and do another set of seven tenths. Because in that way, you're going to work out more quickly and more efficiently when those uh, when the fractions line up with a common denominator. Yeah? So what you can see here is a good way of laying that out. You can see there's a good example over there as well with Toby and Livia. So keep working on that and I'll come around and make sure that everybody's working on the right sort of thing. But also, Peter has drawn on the table with his uh, whiteboard pen just to say what fraction he's got so far. Might be useful just so you can keep track of that and you don't have to retain so much information. <laughs> You said it's 40, so actually, you, you think it's 40. Why don't you see if you can make it? It's 40. Largest to smallest. But can you, if you can, can you write them back in their original form? So yes, you've got them all over the common denominator. I'm not saying what it is because other people are working it out. But once you have the common denominator, you need to then order them, but back in their original form. Yeah. Good. It's looking like it's going well now. So keep that going. So right next to it now. Have you found a common denominator? Okay. Okay. Well, that's because that's the next part. Focus on getting the common denominator first. What do you think it's going to be? I think it's going to be 40. So now you're just trying this one to see if that does. Do you know where the three quarters goes into 40? So does 4 go into 40 equally? Yes. Yeah. So you know that that is a common multiple. You just need to show you that now with the new one. Yeah? Okay, so everybody has laid out their numicon on their tables with the common denominator now found. So somebody tell me what is the common denominator of all of those fractions? Hayden? 40. 40. So what we're looking for now is that all of these fractions will have a denominator of 40. Does everybody agree that that is the common denominator? Yes. Yes? Good. Okay. So now, what do we have to do to find the numerator for each of those fractions? I'm going to something like that so we've got some space. So what do we now have to do to find the numerator for each of those fractions? Livia? You have to multiply it by how much it took to get the 40. So we have to multiply the numerator the same number of times that we multiplied our denominator by to get to 40. So let's take the first example, 3 fifths. How many times, how many fives or fifths do you have laid out on your um, tables? Livia? Eight. You have eight. So eight times five is 40. Do we agree? Yes. Yes. So what do we then need to do to the numerator, Hugo? Times that by eight. Times that by eight. So three times eight is? 24. 24. So we have 24 over 40. For the second one, we've got to 40 as our common denominator of all of them. So 7 tenths, what does that become, Peter? What does 7 tenths become now that it's a denominator of 40? What's the numerator? What's the calculation, Peter? Seven times four. What is seven times four? Seven times four is thirty-two. Is, is it? Somebody help Peter out. 
So 7 times 4 is what, Bradley? 28. 28. Okay, so now we know that actually 7 tenths is more than 3 fifths. So we've already got one, one set sorted. Let's move on to 5 eighths. So what did I do with my 8 here to get a denominator of 40? What did I have to do to the 8? And I can do that by counting up how many 8s I've got. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah? And actually, it's similar to this one here. Yeah? So 8 times 5 is 40, so therefore I have to do it to my numerator. Do the same. So Jack, what does it become if I'm multiplying that by 5? 25. 25. Very close. But again, it's making it really easy for us to order those fractions. Next one. Next one. 16 over 20. So what did I have to do to get my denominator from 20 to 40? What did I have to do to that? Aiden, how did I get my denominator from 20 to 40? Times it by 2. Times it by 2. So what do I need to do to the numerator? Times it by 2. Times it by 2. So what is 16 times 2, Olivia? 32. 32. And 3 quarters. Now I might already know that because I, it's a, a, one, a, a fraction that you would normally do a bit lower down in the school, but 3 quarters, what does that become over 40? How did you get 4 to 40? You multiplied it by, Peter, 4 to 40, 10, therefore you need to do that to your numerator, Peter, 30, good, okay. So now you've got your fractions, you can start to order them, so we're doing largest to smallest. So what is the largest fraction of all of those, the largest fraction? Hayden? 32 over 40. 32 over 40. So I can write it down with my denominator of 40 first. What's next? I'm going to tick it off as I go. What's next? Holly? Um, What's it next? is 7 tenths. Right, um, 3 quarters. 3 quarters, but we're doing it over um, our denominator of 40 at the moment, so we're going to do it that way. Tick it off. What's next? Bradley? Um, seven tenths. Yeah, or 28 over 40. Uh, the next one, Jensen? Five eighths. Five eighths, so 25 over 40. And then the final one, Ethan? Three fifths. Three fifths, so it's 24 over 40. Now, most questions would ask you to put them back in their original uh, simplified way, so they're all equivalent of their original. Okay? So this one is. 16 over 20. This one is 3 quarters. The next one is 7 tenths. The next one is 5 eighths. 5 eighths. 5 eighths. And the next one is 3 fifths. So now you've been given a question where you've been asked to order these five fractions from largest to smallest. If you were to do them without changing the denominator, it would be quite challenging. But because we found a common denominator, we're now able to order that set of five fractions here. We've forgot them at the bottom there. Okay? So what I'm going to give you a chance to do now, before lunch, is an exit ticket, which is a set of four fractions where you're finding a common denominator. So this is one of the new kind of assessment uh, cards that you would do. So if you glue that in your book, and then have a go at answering that one. You can use the Numicon. You can, if you know a common denominator already, because you know the lowest common multiple, then, then have a go at that one of these bits. Okay? So keep going. We'll just we'll keep going for the last few minutes, and then we'll stop. Okay, so keep going. Glue into your book, have a go. You can find the common denominator for all of those. You don't need those ones now, you've done them on the board. Yep, yeah, use the Numicon if you wish. Absolutely, if you already know the common denominator, then you can just follow the same sort of strategy. And actually, you would then be doing it uh, abstract. Yeah, so this is the concrete. Victoria will be drawing the images of the goose and rods. But actually, you can do this now abstract. So you've used the Numicon and you're showing me now in abstract form. Yeah, and then reward them. Okay? Right, what's the common denominator for your business? Right, so 
So what can we do? So we know that those things there's twelve grams of thirty. Thank you.